In this video, we are going to talk about how to stop obsessively thinking about someone. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because a lot of fearful avoidance deal with obsessively thinking about things, but also about people. Because the obsessive part comes from wanting that control, right? So control is a very big part of the fearful avoidant attachment style and things just have to go a certain way. So when you start thinking about someone and you are in love with them or you have strong feelings um, around them, it feels like they have this has to go right. I have to do this perfectly. I have to... Um, get their approval i have to be in a relationship with them and so it can become obsessive you think about them just 24 7 and i definitely experienced this um before i had uh my now relationship and i was obsessed <laughs> with boys and there was one in particular which i will <laughs> I will tell this story because it is, I think it paints, um, it paints a picture of the obsession. So I lived in the States for a year when I was 18 and I went to college there. I lived in dorms, did the whole America college, um, life experience. And there was a guy on the basketball team. I can't believe I'm... <laughs> I'm telling you all of this, um, on the basketball team and he wanted to go out on a date and I actually kind of liked uh, another guy on the basketball team more, but I said yes, because all the attention, right? This was in the period of my life where I would text with six to seven guys simultaneously just to feel kind of fulfilled in my need for attention. So that was, that was a lot. Um, and so we went on a date and I remember it just being, you know, it was fine, but it, I wasn't, I wasn't very interested in him. I think I, I asked him more questions about his, um, the, the other guy in the basketball team, which was also his roommate. And so the date ended and I just very, <laughs> Uh, how do you say, uh, arrogantly assumed that he was going to try to kiss me. And he did not at all. He gave me a hug, a very platonic hug. He walked away and he did not look back. And I remember distinctly the moment, the exact moment where I fell in love with him. And now I would say I got obsessed with him. Because here was a guy that showed interest in me, I wasn't very interested in him, and then he had the audacity <laughs> to not like me. Now I really do have to chuckle and, and laugh at myself a little bit about this because, <sighs> in heaven's name. Um, but yeah, he, he walked away, he didn't look back, and that was when I started obsessing. And when I say obsessing, it was full on almost creepy stalker style obsessing. I would figure out his schedule and run into him. And just to be clear, I didn't feel like I was obsessing about him. I truly felt like I was in love with him. Like I really liked him. And he just had to see how amazing I was, even though I did not believe I was amazing. My self-worth was very, very, very low, which is probably illustrated by the next few <laughs> examples I will give you. So, um, I would figure out his schedule and try to run into him on campus, <clears throat> looking my very best, obviously, trying. And there was this one time where I would coincidentally run into him, not coincidentally, and I just freaked out so much that I actually jumped in the bushes. And he was walking towards me, he hadn't seen me yet, <clears throat> and I just, I could not, I think I, I thought I didn't look perfect, like my hair wasn't perfect or whatever. And so I sat in those bushes, expecting him to just walk past me, not noticing me, preferably, of course. So he walked towards me and then he ran into a girl he knew and they were flirting. <laughs> and I was sitting there in those damn bushes with my 
calves hurting, my muscles of my legs hurting, feeling like such a dumbass for sitting there and it hurting so much that he was actually flirting with another girl. And that launched me into obsessively thinking, what is, what is wrong with me? Why does he like her better? She's not better, blah, blah, blah. I was always thinking in better and worse, like other people are better or worse than me, which is also a very insecure and fearful avoidant thing to do. Um, so I sat there and I think that took a good 20 minutes and um, he never saw me, thank goodness. But yeah, that was that was a very defining moment <laughs> in my life. I don't think I got the lesson at that point, um, but I got it afterwards, I think. I got up and uh, when he was done talking and he, he did walk past me, I got up and with a lot of shame <laughs> walked towards my class and it it kept on being an obsession for months why he didn't like me he had to like me he did this must happen he must like me when i look back i just i i understand obviously i understand so much more now i did not know what was going on at that time but that control like he has to like me because otherwise what i would believe I'm not good enough. So what happened was that I just completely um, gave him all the power. I gave him all the power of my approval, of my self-worth, and I, I truly felt that if he didn't like me, I was worth nothing. And I only did that, I started doing that the moment I realized he was not interested in me. The moment I realized he was not interested in me, I gave him all that power. If he would have kept being interested um, and would have tried to kiss me or, or would have tried to go on a second date, I would not be obsessed with him at all. Isn't this interesting? Isn't this interesting? So for months, I tried to figure out why he didn't like me. And I, I just considered everything. I thought maybe I had bad breath on our day maybe he didn't like my room maybe he didn't I, I don't even know if we went to my room oh yeah we watched a movie in my room but I, I didn't I, I was just I was looking for everything everything um that he might not like about me and uh so I was just super critical of myself <laughs> instead of just thinking oh well maybe well he's obviously he's just not interested you know period that's just the end of it i just had to figure out why in the end you might be interested i did figure out why uh he lost interest and that was because i was talking smack about his roommates the roommate that i actually liked because i was so insecure i i probably talked him down that was pretty much the only explanation I never even considered because I totally forgot that I did that. That just goes to show, I think I spend hundreds of hours obsessing over why he didn't like me and it was all for absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, long story, I hope this was entertaining in some way and maybe you recognize something or please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> um, but I have looked back on that, looked back on that experience so many times and trying to kind of analyze it and um, realizing after a while that I made him into some sort of God that could show me my self-worth, give me my self-worth. And in the end, I, I saw that he was just a boy, really, just trying to do his best and he didn't like me. And that's fine because that's not his responsibility. Um, so yeah, it was it was interesting. So back to the obsessive thinking, I do have experience with that. This is not the only story. This is definitely not the only story about that. But um, I tried a lot of things to stop obsessively thinking about this guy, and. Um, that was distracting myself, for instance. I just tried to study, I tried to play basketball. I loved basketball when I was that age. Um, started exercising more, started watching movies, trying to numb myself. 
Um, I try to find things I hated about him. So actively trying to bring him down so that I would not think about him anymore so obsessively. Um, and I would work really hard on trying to change myself. I remember also, I kind of forgot about this, that I would look up his exes or the girls that he interacted with on, on um, MySpace. My goodness, blast from the past. Uh, it was MySpace back then. And um, I would try to see how they were different than me. And I would try to change myself. And also all the things that I considered maybe were reasons why he lost interest. I try to change that too. So uh, just everything, my appearance, the way I spoke, it, it was just, it was everything. I try to change everything to get this boy's approval. Um, but also to stop thinking about him obsessively. Um, none of it worked, just to be very clear. It was, it was an interesting four months. I think it was four months, I don't know, around four months. In the end, what helped was just allowing it. <laughs> and I used this again later on when I had another obsession <laughs> with another guy. Um, I fought so hard against those obsessions. And then I, as I, as I kind of started to become maybe a little bit more self-aware, I guess, um, not healing yet, but becoming more self-aware, I thought, well, maybe, um, I just need to not fight it anymore. And I just kind of allowed it to be there. And <clears throat> that helped the most. Allowing feelings and allowing thoughts is the quickest way through obsessive behavior. So when you are, when you have very intense feelings about somebody, I had this too during my relationship with Aryan. Um, and it wasn't necessarily like a romantic interest in, in somebody, but I did have very intense, um, uh, how do you say that, savior complex feelings with someone. So I felt like I had to save them and um, could save them. And so, uh, stretching my legs, just, uh, <laughs> um, I did have very intense feelings, almost like motherly feelings, but it was kind of an obsession with this, with this person. And, uh, that's when I did already start healing when I, I actually had healed a lot and I started fighting it because I was afraid I, it would turn into me falling in love. And then in the end, I... I just decided to do the complete opposite and completely allow all feelings. And that was such an interesting experience because the feelings intensified first and it was almost like they came in waves and I really had to ride that wave. I really had to be present with those intense feelings and just allow them completely and not try to fix them or push them away or alter them or try to make them less than they were or than I thought they should be. And so I just completely allowed them. And within, I think, a week, the obsession was gone. It was just, I could feel things, which is a very human experience, to feel things, to feel connection, to feel love, to feel um, you care about somebody. It just wasn't an obsession anymore. It wasn't something I was constantly trying to control 24-7. So the fastest way to stop thinking about somebody obsessively is to just allow all your feelings to be there and not judge them, not say this is too much or it should be different or this is so painful or this is so, um, they, they have to like me because only then can I quench <laughs> these, these feelings, this thirst. Um, no, just accepting whatever is or isn't and allowing those feelings to be there it's completely fine if you have intense feelings about somebody uh, and you don't have to put action behind that you can just allow those feelings to be there and more often than not you will find that uh, after a while those feelings subside 
or it becomes clear that it is not infatuation because obsession can very easily feel like being in love or infatuation. And as you start to allow those feelings completely, um, you will start to see more nuanced, um, more nuances in your feelings. So you will see, oh, this is me just really caring about somebody, not necessarily being in love with them or wanting a relationship with them. So this, this can be scary for fearful avoidance that are very used to suppressing all their feelings and have a lot of negative associations with feelings. But it definitely is the fastest way to stop the obsession. You don't have to control your feelings and you don't have to control your thoughts. They are just thoughts. They are just feelings. They are allowed to be there. And yes, they can get intense, but you can ride that wave. It's it's surfing in a way. <laughs> surfing those feelings. No, but I mean, it, it really, you know, it takes being present and, and a power, being powerful in a way to really be present with those feelings. But you can do that. You can definitely do that. Just allow them to be there. That sounds so simple, right? I know it's not. I know it's not. But this is the fastest way to, to um, stop obsessively thinking about somebody and feeling things about somebody. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if this is something you recognize, if this is something you have maybe have your own stories around. Please share the stories. <laughs> Can't believe I just told you the whole story. Because <sighs> I vowed back then that I would never, <laughs> would never tell anybody because I was quite ashamed of how I acted. But now I know where I came from. And yeah, I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments below if this was valuable to you. And as always, I am so happy you are here and I will see you in the next one.